Hello, hello, Thrifty Art Thursday is on. Welcome, welcome. Just checking, making sure my computer is on there. So making sure I'm on, making sure you guys will be able to see me. Okay. Hello, hello, Thrifty. Okay. <laughs> I always do this. Always, always do this. Oh my gosh, y'all. <laughs> I was like, no, you gotta, you gotta do your hair, and, you know, everything. And then I was getting ready and I forgot to let it down. Whoops. <laughs> anyway, okay, hello. So, um, today's project is inspired with this quote that my friend posted on Facebook. It comes from Find Your find your shine therapy um and uh, it was on this page i forgot i tagged them it's in the post right probably before this one i tagged them so i thought okay i want this in my journal but my thing is that um i want to be able to see it right and with journals and planners like you flip the page and it's gone so i'm thinking okay what am i to see what can i do and i decided that i'm going to turn this into a watercolor bookmark okay so i'm going to show you how to make this kind of a bookmark um so we're gonna work on that i'm going to show you how to do that and then i'm going to show you how you can put your quote on the other side um, before I start though, I wanted to first tell me, say hi, oh my gosh, I lost my mouse. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna put my say hello banner on. Say hi. <laughs> okay. And I wanted to take you through the watercolor real fast. Um, Watercolor can be a little bit intimidating, especially if you start looking at like different tutorials and things you need to learn. So let me show you what works. Uh, different budgets, whatever. You don't have to. Um, you don't have to invest a lot of money to be able to do decent watercolor. Okay, so. Um, these are my children's sets. These came from Faber Castell. I am not crazy about them. I gotta tell you right away. Um, they're kind of grainy. They're very grainy. So I wouldn't use them. But it's something that we've been using. This is a brand called Alex. And we've had this one for a decade. <laughs> <laughs> and I bought those two because I completely forgot I had this one and I didn't see it. I went through my boxes and did see it. I just found it recently. So I'm going to try and test this and see what happens, how this works. These are the ones that I'm using. And I'd say they're like they're in okay quality. This is a soft. So I think that's Michael's, right? Um, I like them ish, but. I also don't like them, so I'm not super crazy about them. And I got myself a new set that's coming soon. I haven't gotten it yet, um, but in my dreams, right? Uh, this is a good set. If you just want to try and play with the watercolors and like, you know, feel your way around it, this is a good set. Uh, what I don't like about it is that uh, they tell you that you can fill out like some... Um, a box or whatever with shapes with it and uh, it will become like cakes like this kind cakes right and so i did but what happened with what happened is that they dry out into crumbs and so then i have to be super careful to not to not spill them and whatnots so it just gives you an idea but this is a good set of colors and everything. So if you were to use this, I would suggest to just uh, put a little bit on your palette and just use that and not don't do the box. Okay. Um, 
I was gonna show you, I wanted to show you the paper that I use real fast. I'm not very particular about that, okay? I am not a fancy, fancy watercolor artist. I just like to play with watercolor. So I have these. This is watercolor cards from Stress More. These are great. I've used like a half of them by now. Um, they're good quality if you want, would like to try something like that. Canson watercolor, gold press. Um, I've used that, that's good. I have an Arteza brand, Arteza brand watercolor uh, sketchbook. And a friend gave me Strathmore, also watercolor paper. It's like 15 sheets in a, in a thing. And this is what I'm gonna be using today for the bookmark. It really doesn't matter what you use as long as it's watercolor paper, because when you use watercolor, you use a lot of water on it and uh, water makes your paper warp, right? It kind of makes it wet and um, wavy and uh, watercolor paper will bounce back like with this one that I did ahead of time. Um, it will bounce back, okay? <sighs> um, uh, this is another sample of watercolor paper. So um, it will bounce back, okay? So let's pretend you have watercolors and I'm just gonna start working on that. Um, let me move this over to the side. Ugh. As always, it doesn't matter how well I clean out my work area before this, I always end up with a pile of stuff. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to do this. So for this, I'm going to need uh, two colors and salt. So salt, um, I'm using regular kosher salt. Nothing, nothing fancy. This it's the salt that made these, do you see like these orangish spots and specks? That's the salt. That's what the salt does. And like over here, do you see like th this pretty stuff happening over here? That's the salt sprinkled on top of wet watercolor. If you want to, to have this kind of effect, I really like designs like this. It's kind of my 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 thing uh this was an experiment that's why it has something else painted on the other side but what i do with these i scan them and then i can use them for my collages and like other stuff and i really like cutting them into strips like this one and then just using them for my bookmarks i am a big bookmark person i love bookmarks okay What's next? So I need to choose my two colors. I think I'm just gonna go with uh, with blue and yellow again to just kind of not throw you guys off and kind of achieve a similar result. Result. You can never get the same result with watercolors, though. It's always different. I've already cut out the strip. Um, I'm going to use a huge, that's a number like a 20. No, that says a 10. Never trust the numbers on brushes, honestly. Like this is a 10. And then I had another one right here. Where is it? Well, and this is a 10 from different brands. I mean, go figure, right? So um, just a big fat brush to to mop the water on it. So we're gonna do wet on wet technique, which means that we're gonna be putting wet watercolor on wet paper. And for this to be ready, I'm gonna put some water into my paints first. So it's come back to life, especially when you're using cakes like this, when they're dried up, you need to add some water. So I'm gonna be using this blue, which I really do not remember what it's called. It does have a name and I have my box here so I can look it up. I think it's this one, cerulean blue, of course. It's been my favorite color for forever. And let me take off that banner that says, say hi, if I can find my mouse. Where did it go? Come on. 
Aha, there you are. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I put some water on here. And so cerulean blue is kind of a um, colder color, cooler color. So I'm just going to put some water into my yellow and just let it sit and wake up. It will wake up pretty nicely. Uh, normally, you wouldn't paint directly from uh, from the pan. Normally, uh, you would mix your colors over to the side. But for this project, for this project, it's fine. You don't need to. It's fine. So I'm putting my brush in my water. I'm going to move it over so you can see what I'm doing. OK, just very wet brush. And I'm just going to wet one side of my paper. And I really, really want it really, really wet like puddles okay it will soak up some water but um, this is what we want okay that goes over to the side and I'm gonna get my medium-sized brush kind of put it in the water oh you also need a paper towel to clean your brush when you're done okay um, Trying to see, They're trying to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. Ah, hold on, let me move things around so that it's all visible. Okay, here we are. Okay, good. Okay, wet, get some of this cerulean blue, just fill up your brush with it. Okay, and just drop dots on there. Now see how it spreads nicely? That's called blooming. And that is a fantastic quality of watercolors. So um, that's what it does, it blooms. It blooms and it spreads and it grows. So I think I have enough blue. I like to have my water clean as I, as I work. So what I usually do, oh, Tammy, oh, hi. <laughs> okay, thanks for the compliment. Definitely do try and use watercolors. They're so much fun. And yes, I'm glad you looked at Facebook during your work day too. <laughs> okay, so I wipe it down on the paper towel before I put it in my water and it keeps my water cleaner, you know? Okay, so now I'm gonna go and go ahead and grab some yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. And as you see, I'm not being shy about it. I'm just grabbing a lot of yellow. And I'm gonna put more yellow in these white spots over here where I have white. And look, I'm looking at it and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not blooming anymore. I'm not, that's not good, right? But go back and see if you can add it. Like, look where the wetness is and put the yellow on there. Okay, because you still want to have a little bit of white. That's kind of your highlight. Okay, so it doesn't need to be all covered in, um, in paint. Okay, I contaminated with some blue, so I'm going to rinse out my brush so that I don't put blue into my yellow here in the cake. Since I'm painting directly out of the cake, I do not want that to happen. This is something you can do any time. It doesn't require any specific skills. Just kind of pick your two colors, go for it. Okay, so believe it or not, this one looked like that. <laughs> but then, hi Jacqueline. Uh, but then, I, I left it to dry for like 24 hours and this is what happened, okay? So now, my next step would be, you know what, I'm going to put it on the on a little tray here so that I can just take it off without messing up the salt, okay? Because I can't, 
I'll just show you how to do this, but then I'll continue with the one that I have pre-made. So I'm just putting salt in its regular course. Um, what's it called? Kosher, whatever salt I get from my grocery store. And I'm going to put a lot of salt on it. The salt only works if you would let it dry completely with the salt on. Do not try to scrub the salt off before it's completely dry. Okay, so the salt, it kind of pulls in the moisture and it creates all these super cool designs. So that's it, and you let it dry, okay? That's pretty much the beginning of it. And so as I showed you with that big one over here, this one here, you can, you can do it on a larger scale and like play with different colors and like put salt on one side and you can spray a little bit of alcohol. It would also create a different effect. And I also heard of people adding bleach. I haven't done bleach yet. I can't stand the smell of it. <laughs> but bleach also creates very interesting uh, blooms. Uh, with watercolors so yeah so you can do this and then just cut it up if you if you wanted to do that so now I'm gonna add I'm gonna think how to oh don't put water on that that's not good so when your watercolor is dry you do not really want to put water on it you know okay so um, I've been kind of trying to think what I wanted to do with this. If I just want to cut and paste or if I want to, to um, write it down. I think I'm going to write it down so that it sticks to me like better in my brain. I wanted to Mary. Uh, I'm sorry. Is it Mary or is it Mar Marie? I'm like, uh oh. Mary, probably. I can't wait to experiment with these salt alcohol techniques. Definitely do that. It's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. Oh, I need to show you. Hold on. Give me a second. So here, this is my older, um, this is my first sketchbook that I did watercolors in. Hold on. Let me see. I have this page with kind of bookmarks ish where are they hold on just want to give you an idea here look you can doodle on top of that like it's just so much fun watercolor is so much fun and here is here's my like first ever watercolor project you know it's just waterproof pen on top of watercolor like you can do so much stuff with it it's incredible Okay, moving on. <laughs> so I think I'm going to Yeah, I'm gonna let this. I'm gonna letter this. Uh Tammy says, nice if you know how to doodle. Y'all. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I just did this in my um, in my free group, which the link is up there, so you, you can join it. Uh, we got together on Sunday, and I showed them how to doodle this over here for, for their planners, okay? And I hear a lot of, oh, like, I can't do that. Yes, you can. If you saw my very first flower that I doodled uh, four years ago, you'd be like, girl, <laughs> put down the pencil. <laughs> That's not, like, not a good thing, right? But it gets better. It just takes practice. All right. So I'm just kind of trying to think as I'm talking so fast, what am I going to use? Because I don't want to use all of them. This is totally so kind of um, for me. You are kind and you can have boundaries. Being kind and have boundaries is great. Um, it kind of speaks to me. So I'm choosing the things that will speak to me. 
give you gave your all and you to bake back out that's kind of a great thing i might rephrase it a little bit but yeah you're resilient and need a break i love that i love that mm. yes others have it worse don't we always have this like we're going through something and either somebody tells us or we tell ourselves that oh there are people they have it so much worse and uh, how how dare i to complain you know and i must tell you you complain you feel like you feel your pain is valid what you're going through is what you're going through you know everybody gets their own trauma trauma is so much overused like this word is so overused but totally and absolutely okay so i'm gonna use four one two three four so hey that's easy enough, right? I'm just going to break this in half. You know what? I'm not going to do this on this side. No, well, maybe. Yeah, I can. It will erase. So very gently. I don't know. Can you see my line? Yeah, you should be able to see it. Well, here. Yeah. So I'm eyeballing. You can use a ruler if you like. I always eyeball my lettering. I just I'm too lazy to to measure things and you know all of that. So that's four. You're resilient and need a break. So that will go over here and over there. And then there is another one and another one. I want to encourage you to use your own handwriting don't be afraid to use your handwriting okay um it will probably fit on the line if, it, if i just use like my regular handwriting let me see if i can bring this a little bit lower there that probably that should work Yeah, you can you should be able to see this. So you are resilient and need a break. And that's okay to need a break. So what I'm using is a um, waterproof pen. It's a Faber Castell brand. I've had them for years. Well, a couple of years for sure. And I really love them. You can use a Sharpie on this, you know, it can be anything. Of course, I, I shortened the word. I made it. Of course, I did. You're... You need a break. Yeah, that's good. Okay, you gave your all and you need to back out. Yep. Do you ever feel guilty for backing out? Like when you, you've done everything you could and you feel like you don't have anything else to offer. It's like, I think this is relevant. Okay. And then you are kind and have boundaries you can be kind and you can still say no kind
it's a little bit scratchy the way it writes because there is salt that kind of got stuck to the paper but i still like it so i feel like it's a great reminder others others have it worse And your pain is valid. Okay. So this is where I am right now. I have it all written down. Okay. So just my handwriting. And I think I'm going to add, speaking of doodles, let's add some doodles. Be fun. Um, so what I like to use, okay, so Sharpies I like. I like these uh, Faber-Castell um, waterproof pens. They are awesome. I absolutely love Posca pens. They are also awesome. And I also have this jelly, jelly, jelly roll pan in here that makes it so easy to add white when I want to. Okay, here's my small pan. Okay, so I think I'm going to add white designs to it. So I'm going to just use the pos No, You know what? I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with the jelly roll and I'm going to see if it works. If it doesn't, I can always switch to the Posca pen. So what I was thinking, I want to add a little vine over here in the middle. So I'm just going to start with doing that. It's very subtle. Let me see if my Posca pen does better. Might do better work. Yeah, it's it's a little bit brighter. It shows brighter, so I'm just gonna stick with that. It's not happy with me. I think it's empty. I think I ran out. <gasps> I ran out. No, it's still going, look. So, hmm, it's very, very light, right? Super light. Let me see, I have another one. So this is more like a regular size marker. Let me see if I can. So I've had these for about a year. Ugh. And they, I really like my, <laughs> I really like my Posca pants, and so I use them a lot. And I think this is about the time when they kind of stop working for me. <laughs> of, of course, this happens while I am trying to show you. You know what? I'm just gonna switch back to black because I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. And even though. It might look a little bit different. It'll still be good, you know? There. Okay. <laughs> so let's make this vine pretty, okay? Let's... So what makes... Um, so sometimes when you look at doodles and you're like, oh, this is so complicated, just take it apart into pieces, okay? It's really not that complicated. It's just little elements put together, 
okay and when you look at it you sometimes just like oh it's a lot it really isn't all right so i'm gonna i usually start at the bottom and i add just a little leaf just like that um then i'm gonna step so like each hump is gonna have a leaf okay and then another hump you kind of do the uh, the stem and then you add a leaf to it and then another hump in the leaf and a leaf and a leaf and I'm trying to kind of uh, turn them a little bit so that they don't hit the letters on my on my writing another leaf and another leaf can you see what I'm doing should I maybe try and turn my camera over off to the side at an angle so that maybe you can see maybe easier to see yes boo Are you almost done? we have company I am not When will you be done? By 3 o'clock. Okay, so I have this whole thing, right? The vine of leaves. What are you doing? I'm uh, doing live. I'm making a bookmark. Oh, yeah. that looks easy. Okay, then. Okay. So next element, and I like to think about I like to think about different elements, right? So we did the leaf here. I know, I know how we're gonna do this. We're just gonna make it bigger a little bit so that we can plan, right? So I have my leaves here and here. Okay, I really like adding something like. A branch that goes curves onto the leaf like this okay and then at the end of the branch I just add like a little fork and then you can add little dots to it yeah or you can turn it into little flowers if you have space like here in the big one we do but I think on the little one we want but this I'm gonna do next so I'm just going around the leaf, adding that little fork and dots. There isn't much room. If you're using a Sharpie, you might want to use a fine tip Sharpie because the thick tip Sharpie won't, like the regular Sharpie, you won't be able to create thin lines like that. And yes, you absolutely can use a Sharpie. Okay, I just don't like them because they smell. Okay. Just like that. And you all, when you practice doodles, like if you want to doodle, right? And you think, oh, what should I doodle? Um, don't feel bad about doing the same design over and over and over again. <laughs> Out of the mouth of babes, says Tammy. Is that about looks simple? Yeah, he, he feels like, um, so for our homeschool art class, I taught them the uh, watercolor techniques so they know the wet and wet, wet and dry, like all of that stuff. And so now he feels superior. <laughs> He feels like he knows art. He can do art. And he totally can. I'm not saying he cannot. He totally can. But he feels like he knows how to do everything. Okay. <laughs> Fun things. Okay. And here goes another. Oh, I forgot my fork. Okay. 
So there is that. Okay, so I'm thinking right in between here in the middle, I'm just gonna add like a big dot, it's like a bead. Right? So as I'm going up, right here, I'm adding a dot. As I'm going down, I'm adding a dot. And then I just keep going. I really did not uh, plan this design earlier. So I'm just going with the flow and I'm thinking, okay, this is what I want to add next. And there's so many different cute designs that you can do. Okay. And the more. And I think I have room for one more, maybe not. I'm going to squeeze it in because it's kind of asking for it. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Okay, and now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, I'm going to turn this dot into something else. <laughs> So I'm just going to use my marker and I'm just going to go like this. Just add random amount of petals, whatever I have room for. Okay. Whatever fits. I'm thinking no more than eight petals. So if that helps. And they can be randomly shaped. They don't need to be. Um, yeah, they don't need to be specific or whatever. It's a doodle. I, I don't think I ever did this with like this kind of flower and a doodle. I think it's the very first time I did this one. Okay. Something like that. And see how nicely it kind of uh, filled in. Just took up the space and made it all kind of pop right away. Okay. So I'm thinking this is a little bit dark. Yeah. This is quite dark. So I'm just going to grab my white gel pen and I'm going to add some highlights. So I'm coloring inside of the leaves and I'm making the center of these um, bigger flowers that we just drew. Just adding to that. I will bring it up to the camera so you guys can see. There. So something like that. Whoa, too fast. Here, something like that. Okay, and now I see that my words are very hard to read. I did write them with a, a smaller marker. So I'm going to get a marker that's a little bit more fat, right? Bigger, that's size F here and I'm just going to go all over my letters just to see the difference. Yeah. 
just go over the letters. And that's it. Just using your regular handwriting. It's nothing, nothing complicated. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, my handwriting changes depending on my mood, depending on how I hold my pen, depending on the angle of the paper. Like, it's crazy. My teachers would not sometimes believe me because uh, they'd be like, why, why, why is this your notebook? But like two pages look completely different. Well, I wasn't as smart back then. Like now I'd be like a uh, personality disorder. <laughs> but, but for real, like it's crazy. And then sometimes I feel like cursive and sometimes I feel like doing print and sometimes I mix them both together. It's just. One of those things, you know? Okay, y'all. So, um, Saturday, Saturday Paint Night Out Live, SPNL, Saturday Paint Night Live. Saturday Paint Night Live, I forgot what my own live is called. Uh, we'll be painting daffodil fields. So, make sure to to check that out it will be done in my group it will not be live on the page so if you want to paint that you guys need to join the group i want to start doing other things on my page and so the paint parties the long ones that take like two hours to complete all of that is going to go in the group just makes sense to me because because it makes sense okay so i'm gonna probably start doing more things like journaling and like you know tips and tricks like like this on the page that needs a period i always have my kids i always at i'm always at my kids for where is the period <laughs> did you forget <laughs> do not forget Okay. Okay, last word. All right. So I've separated it this way, but I didn't separate it across. And I think to separate across, I'm just going to add little dots. So I have this line here. It's not directly straight down and it messes with my Zen, but I'm just going to add little dots. Okay, obviously you can add like little dots in the perimeter, so. Okay, Tammy says I have COVID, but instead of just hanging out at home doing whatever, I have been hanging out at home working full days. I wish I could just play with paint and doodle. Girl, feel better. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah? Okay, so I, or are you done? here we are. I am almost done, and I do not appreciate you doing this. Thank you. Almost done. 
Okay. And then on the back, I'm going to write a note. Or maybe a little bit lower because I'm going to hold punch. I'm going to say hello. So that's my reminder. And it uh, would be great if I... Well, Tammy, I'm glad you're feeling bad, like, uh, you know, good. <laughs> I mean, oh, no, it's all in the back. Hold on. I'm going to reach all the way in the back to find my whole bunch. Do I have time to make a tassel? Probably. So this is the top of my bookmark. So I'm just going to punch hole, making sure that I'm not getting any words. So that's my hole. Hold on, I'll get my yarn. If I remember where it is, it would be great. I... Looks like I... Yeah, I put the main thing over, over somewhere, but I still have this. So I'm gonna... Don't remember where I put the main baggie. Okay, so I have... This is kind of lavender color. I think it will work well with that. This is just... um, What's it called? Cotton... Oh my gosh, embroidery, it's embroidery thread. So I'm just gonna open it and that's probably not the right. Maybe it is. Yeah, okay. So I'm just getting some out. Just unwinding or whatever the word is. Right, just kind of unraveling it so that it's not all okay. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit, y'all, so that you guys can see if you want to see how to make how I make my tassels for my bookmarks. You totally can. Okay, looks good. So this goes up. Scissors. Okay. So any yarn would work. So this is how I do this. I just wrap it around my hand. And I pretty, I use a lot. Like I like my tassels to be full. So as much as, you know, make it as full as you like. Yeah, this is why I tried to undo it while I was, I just want to use this whole thing. I don't like pieces of thread left over. <laughs> okay, dun, dun, dun. Just kind of wrap, wrap, wrap. Okay, and uh, I'm going to cut a piece about, it's probably about two, two and a half feet long, just kind of. Gives you, yeah. Oh, I cut it on the wrong side. So, <laughs> my other tip was on here, my other end. So, I need to be here. All right. Then, come on. There we go. So, I'm going to grab a decent piece of thread. Thread it through here, through the top, like this. And I'm going to tie a knot on the top, and then I do the double knot. Double knot. Okay. Now bring this down. Okay. Then I'm going to cut another piece so that I can tie it. Gonna go under. Oh, 
Aqui tá, tem um lá. And go like that. Oh. Okay. And again, double knot. So these pieces are going to go back in here. Okay, and then I'm going to find like a couple of threads, two or three, and I'm just going to cut. I'm going to uh, pull on them tight so that they're tight. Okay, and just kind of cut in half, kind of, sort of. They're all going to be different lengths right now, but um, it'll work. So just cut through. Uh, make sure that you've got all of them. Let me see. I think I got all of them. Okay, and so then I'm using my scissors to kind of straighten them together. Okay, and then I use my hand like I do like scissor fingers. And I kind of push it like that. And so see like all the tips that are not even, you can just go with your scissors and cut them. And uh, there's your tassel, okay? And so then I make sure these ends are even. And I tie a knot at the end. Just like that, and then it goes through this little hole, and the opening. Oh, okay, and the opening, and then the tassel goes through the opening. Just pull it through, and that's it. And um, I mean, you can cut this off if it bothers you. It's not going anywhere. And what I forgot to do, I'm going to go back and erase all of my pencil lines. Should have done it before I put the tassel on, but that's fine. It's not, not going to hurt anything. And this is also why you need your watercolor completely dry. You want it totally and completely dry. Okay, and I know I keep saying and, and so, oh my gosh, how how awesome, look, it, it matches my planner, I, I totally didn't plan it like that, and so I'm going to get into my planner, so this is this week, this is next week, and so I'm going to put it in my planner. And I have this super cute reminder in my planner that it's okay to, to do your best and then have some rest and have a break and all of that. So this is it for today. Um, if you enjoyed it, let me know. If you're going to make your own bookmark, show me. If you're going to play with watercolors, show me. If you're going to... Excuse me, if you're gonna, um, I don't know, <laughs> show me, show me, show me, show me, join my group uh, if you want more things to do like that, like creative things that, that you can do. And um, yeah, so I'm going to log out and sending you the good vibes and uh, lots of love. All right, love ya. And now I need to find my mouse. Let me find my mouse. Here we are.